welcome all let's understand artificial intelligence what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is imparting a cognitive ability to a machine so the machine that we are referring here can be a computer or an agent what are cognitive abilities the cognitive abilities are the brain skills the ability to learn the ability of decision making the ability of logical thinking and decision so artificial intelligence is imparting a cognitive ability to a machine and what is the standard the benchmark the benchmark of artificial intelligence is the human intelligence regarding reasoning speech and vision this benchmark is far from the future when we are inserting the word benchmark we are we are mentioning about the standard so what does a standard ai means the standard ai is just reflecting a human replacing a human even in terms of intelligence regarding reasoning speech and vision and this benchmark is definitely far off in the future so currently we are at level 1 of artificial intelligence as discussed in the previous slide let's understand the standards and what are all the types of artificial intelligence experimentations that is going on in laboratories across the world see artificial intelligence has three levels what is narrow ai first is narrow ai an artificial intelligence said to be a narrow when the machine can perform a specific task better than a human and the current research of ai is here now so the automated machines that they, that you see in various industrial environments which is actually replacing a human just doing the work that is being prescribed to so that is what is called as a narrow ai most of production centers have this narrow ai and currently we are at this stage experimenting and developing things what is general ai an artificial intelligence reaches the general state when it when it can perform any intellectual task with the same level of accuracy as human would so when a machine or an agent which we train can actually perform an intellectual task with the same level of accuracy with certain reasoning abilities then we call that as a general ai and what is an active ai this is a future state and this is even a dangerous state too we are supposed to actually graduate to the active state from narrow to general to eight active but we are supposed to keep the machines under control let's see let's see how this challenge has been handled and ai is active when it can beat humans in many tasks let's immerse in the beauty of flowers cherry blossoms cherry blossoms symbolize the arrival of spring the season of flowers the beautiful pink and white blossoms opens at the end of march or the beginning of april the blooming period can last 14 days cherry blossoms have a great significance in japanese culture for them the blooming of cherry blossoms represents a new beginning and the beauty of life with more than 25000 known species orchids are one of the largest flowering plant family in the world you can spot this beautiful plant nearly everywhere on earth but what makes orchids so special is each orchid species is unique This is an interesting slide which shows the hierarchies of the various technologies that is currently under discussion hot discussions so artificial intelligence we have discussed and one subset is machine learning machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is a subset of machine learning so the further slides we are going to discuss about what is machine learning about and deep learning about the internals of machine learning see what is machine learning machine learning is the best tool so far to analyze understand and identify a pattern in the data 
why you understand why should you understand a pattern of the data say let's example let's uh, consider this thing you have a software program a software program has been instructed the logic what is supposed to do and it is supposed to and it runs as per the logic and what happens with the input variables that you have defined is of a different data type it gets struck is it so that's the challenge your conventional software program will actually execute an instruction for a set of data for some particular set of data machine learning is a concept where irrespective of the input data the algorithm tries to adjust and manage to get an output to give a clear picture a traditional program stops working when the input data is different from what has been defined whereas a machine learning will try to understand the relationship between the input and the expected output and he manages to conceive and develop the algorithm accordingly so there is something called as a training phase where the algorithm is being shown different types of data fit different type types of data so that the algorithm will learn and understand the different possibilities of input data that could be supplied and he develops an algorithm so as to accurate all the input data so as to give it up so the advantage is that the human intervention is reduced a lot so coming back to the slide the clear breach from the traditional analysis analysis is that the machine learning can take decisions with minimal human intervention and machine learning uses the data to feed an algorithm that can understand the relationship between the input and the output when the machine finished learning it can predict the value or the class of a new data point so that is nothing but the output so when machine learning finished when the machine finishes the learning it can predict the value that is the output or the class of new data point when i say class so that is something called as classifier which will understand which you will understand in the later slides when a requirement where you are having given four objects and you are supposed to classify it as a human you can visually classify it very easily you can say this is a cycle this is a boat this is a car this is an airplane and do you know why because you have been trained from your younger age you have been trained saying that a cycle looks like this a boat looks like this a car looks like this an airplane looks like this though the sizes may not be the same you have been trained right from the beginning right to be engaged saying that this are the attributes so we are trying to mimic us to a machine so a machine is supposed to actually be trained to say that a cycle looks like this a boat looks like this so that is what is called as a training of an algorithm so once the algorithm is trained he will do the same work as us he will just replace us as us and reduce our burden so for a machine the attributes that he will look for for getting trained is called as a feature vector for example if this be the cycle he will actually consider this to be an image and he will set certain attributes in the form of a number and they, he calls this as a feature vector so once he sets a feature vector he will label that as bicycle similar way he will set the feature vectors for different objects and he will label label them as bicycle boat car and a plane and this feature vector on the label is been fed to the algorithm and this algorithm on continuous iteration continuous training with different sets of data objects he will be able to just do the same work as us and he will be able to classify things and hence this is called as a classifier so the training and algorithm requires to follow a few standard steps first collect the data he is collecting the data collecting the data with the feature vector the feature vector is very important and once a, for each and every feature vector he will put a something called as a, he put something called as a label and the label is the actual answer so collects the data trains the classifier and he makes predictions and on continuous iterations the algorithm is being strengthened and inferences done and the output of the machine says car here in this case 
So here in this case, he'll be trained with these four elements, with the feature vector label, and the algorithm is strengthened. And finally, you give a test data, give a different type of car, but still, with the strength of the training and learning that he has done here, he will predict this as a car. Hence, the learning, we say it as, we call that as machine learning. Let me introduce a beautiful concept called as deep learning. So deep learning is a part of artificial intelligence where again a machine or an agent is being trained. So deep learning is a computer software that mimics the network of neurons in brain. Getting back. So this is the structure of a neuron in brain. Excuse me if I would be taking you to certain biology classes. At that learning biology is a, is a nice experience. So this one neuron in brain. Here dendrites are the structures which will have the connection with the next neuron or the nearby neuron. The neuron transmits signals from one neuron to other. Here what a picture, the picture you see is the amplified version of one single neuron. So dendrites get connected to the next neuron or the previous neuron and this dendrites collect the information and the information collected gets stored in the cell body. And from the cell body it starts get, getting transmitted to the next neuron, the next sequential neuron from the terminals called as axons. And axon terminals are the last connecting endpoints which will transfer the information from this neuron to the next neuron. So dendrites collect the neurons, the signals from the previous neuron and stores in the cell body if required amplifies and transmits the signal to the next neuron and the axon terminals through the axon terminals so deep learning is a computer software that mimics the network of neurons in a brain so our deep learning is going to use the concept which i explained over here so it is a subset of machine learning and is called deep learning because it makes use of deep neural networks Brain works with the help of a network of neurons. Similarly, our deep learning makes use of deep neural networks and interesting concepts which you are going to study in the subsequent videos and slides. The machine uses different layers to learn from the data. The depth of the model is represented by the number of layers in the model. In machine learning, we have the data sets and algorithm and the algorithm actually gets starts learning from the data sets by training and hence gets strengthened. Here the deep learning, the learning of a machine happens by layer by layer. So depth of the model is represented by the number of layers in the model. A deep learning is a new state of art in the term of artificial intelligence. In deep learning, the learning phase is done through a neural network. A neural network is an architecture where the layers are stacked on top of each other. A glimpse of how this technology works. The neural networks that we use in deep learning aren't actually biological neural networks, but it uses the concept of the neurons and the neural networks of the brain. They simply share some characteristics with biological neural networks and for this reason we call artificial neural networks. See what does the machine learning do? Coming back to the previous slides. <clears throat> in machine learning, we give the data and a feature vector has been forked out and labeled and algorithm is trained and inference happens. Similarly, artificial neural networks are built on what we call as neurons. Our neurons in an artificial network, neural networks are organized into what we call as layers. Here the learning happens in the layers. So here is the input similar to feature vectors. Now here is the input which is similar to the data and the feature vector is in the form of neurons and the learning happens in this neurons stage by stage. So the objective is same. The objective is to reduce the human effort 
or train a machine to learn and do the work of a human but the learning methodology differs there it happens to training the data here though training happens but it happens layer by layer with the concept of neurons where the data is passed from one stage to the other with some added weights i mean to say when the neuron gets transmits transmits data from this stage this layer to the next layer it adds some weight let's understand step by step clean i mean uh, a deeper of this about this weights and the layers in the subsequent videos so artificial neural networks since this network is artificial we call it artificial neural networks are not the similar one of a brain neural network artificial neural networks are built using what you call as neurons yes these are the neurons neurons in artificial neural networks are organized into what you call as layers yes these are the layers layers within the layers this layer h2 between h1 hn is called as hidden layer and depending upon the complexity of the requirement on the learning the number of layers differs it increases or reduces if an artificial neural network has more than one hidden layer we call it as deep neural network the next beauty it's definitely a confusing name actually the bird of paradise is an exotic plant native to south africa on blooming its pretty flowers look exactly like the bird of flight in paradise that's why it is named so bird of paradise is also called as a cray flower this unusually beautiful flowers symbolizes the paradise itself gazania is a beautiful daisy look like flower native to south africa it is also known as a treasure flower convincingly gazania has pretty bright colored flowers and very attractive long and silver green leaves 